The O Cannabis Conference and Expo returns to Toronto June 1st through the 3rd, and there's still some good booth locations available. This exciting event is free for cannabis retailers, and will feature Tommy Chong receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award at the O Cannabis Industry Awards. For more information about exhibiting or to register to attend, go to ocannabis.com. That's O-C-A-N-N-A-B-I-Z.com. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at a pitch deck. To help us do that is Katrina Gogowski, angel investor and attorney. Katrina, thanks for being back on The Talking Hedge. Thanks, Josh. All right, so the smart root system, uh, haven't looked at this at all, just like usual. It's gonna be the first time we look at it together. It's an ag tech platform to thrive and expand high value crop markets. Uh, and just like we always do, we take a look at the seven tips to a successful investment deck. But number one being, do they identify the business plan goals? Number two, do they know their audience? Number three, are they gonna understand the market? Four, will they identify needs and roadblocks? Number five, do they know what sets the business apart? Six, will they introduce the team and products? And number seven, will they create a summary with a call to action? I don't know. Let's see. All right, digital and physical intersection. Uh, by the way, I want to note that this is not um, a deck from North America or even Europe. So um, I'm, the English may not be perfect. I don't know, but just kind of want to throw that out there. So digital physical intersection. So they rent software and hardware that enables market access and boosts productivity 30 to 60% for high value crop farmers um, looking at increased production. So looking at um, growth and software platforms. Okay, I can get down with that. I, I like that he says it costs $3 per plant per year. That, that's a nice figure to know, Josh. Yeah, very simple. Um, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, this next graph looks at um, the high value crops. So in terms of millions of plants based on uh, Columbia hectares, uh, by the way, this is a Columbia pitch deck, apparently. <laughs> so looking at millions of plants, they can do, uh, what is that? 84 million cocoa plants using 300,000 hectares. Uh, blueberries, 75 million plants can be grown across 10,000 hectares and 21 million avocado plants across 100,000 hectares. Oh, and then look, cannabis. So nothing quite there for the numbers, but um, obviously is ripe for the cannabis market. I like that chart. Yeah. Customer valuation proposition. So international market access, enhanced financials and management, um, traceability, which is nice, uh, a return on investment. So for your crop, uh, for cannabis, you're looking at 1500% down to about 432 if you use it for avocados. This is based on a 30% baseline yield improvement. So if you're only improving your system by 30%, um, and this is actually a, a system similar to what got me into the cannabis space in 2013 was to automate the cannabis space. Um, so I'm familiar with it. I, I haven't seen something that, um, is plug and play ready to take that over utilizing AI and, and everything else, uh, but we'll see how far they get. So hardware software, that's important. So looking at uh, modules and management, um, the app store, all of that good stuff. So I'm assuming that there's, um, you know, the different modules being, you know, a light detector, soil, moisture, uh, water, um, even if a door opens or not. So all of those things can be monitored. And um, with uh, the right software, it can, it can be smart enough to figure things out. Hopefully, this company is there. So some of the key learnings they want to um, uh, improve the efficiency and technology procedures. Um, yeah, I think we'll skip this one. All right, financials. So the profit per year in the US looking at 225 million, that's based on 100 million customers. So that's kind of difficult to get one in three people, man, women and child in the US, not realistic, actually, at all. Um, yeah, 100 million people would basically be every single 
uh, adult in the U.S. Uh, between the ages of 18 and 49. Uh, that that would be a, a large chunk of the market. Let's assume that they're that they're meaning 225 U.S. dollars with a total global customer of 100 million. Let's let's give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that that's what they meant. Um, getting a 30 percent market share. Uh, first mover advantage, I think, is definitely feasible if they're able to have that kind of data. Um, I mean, look what uh, look what happened with uh, Ring. Ring got passed up by all of the sharks on Shark Tank, and then it took Amazon to buy it for that to become a household name. So you don't really need a whole ton of market share before someone just doesn't really know what to invest in, sees the opportunity, buys it, and then your 30% market share becomes 90 yeah, and as we've talked about before, Josh, cost of goods sold is something that this industry needs to address and needs to get under control. So hopefully this product uh, can address that. Yeah, hopefully. Like I mentioned, if, if there's um, cameras that can detect, you know, uh, the leaves tacoing when it kind of looks like a U shape, that's either from environmental factors like too much wind or nutrient deficiencies. So having like artificial intelligence that can not only pick that up, but determine what it is and then correct it is true automation that this industry needs desperately in order to reduce, you know, Canada's uh, dollar per gram, $6 per gram down to more competitive rate in the US that we're seeing roughly at $1.30 per gram. It's definitely gonna take automation technology, hardware, software like this uh, to be, you know, in place uh, everywhere. Um, in terms of the impact on, on the climate, um, looks like they're trying to say that uh, up to 1.5 million tons of water is dumped during the weekend at a tourist site. Um, so they're able to save some water and plastic bottles and everything by using automation, I'm assuming. Not very clear. This slide confuses me. Uh, let's, let's find out why they're talking about recycling plastic in connection with their product, Josh. Yeah. All right, the smart root system um, gives the team, that's good. So they're looking at having a negative CO2 impact to become a green unicorn, unicorn being a company that exceeds a billion dollars in uh, market cap. So nice. milestones, they want 27% equity financing at, for their capital raise. So that's 7% um, equity with a six month runway. What? This, I, I like this slide and I don't like this slide, Josh. Uh, they're putting real numbers in here. If you invest $12,000, you get 7% equity. I really like that. <laughs> um, but I, I like it because it gives real numbers. Uh, and I really, really like having actual numbers of what your dollar is going to buy. But what I don't like is the, the different classifications and the different percentages and the descriptions of what that investment gets you. So that makes me wonder, are we talking about multiple different companies here? Or are we talking about different phases of the growth of the company? So this slide just isn't clear. So I, I both like and dislike this slide, Josh. I've never seen anything like it because the valuations on here are totally different. So whoever created this doesn't understand finance. They don't, they don't even know what they're doing. It, it's a little frightening because this is a lawsuit waiting to happen. This slide alone will get you sued because the moment you sell something uh, $12,000 for 7% equity, and then you turn around for a $500,000 valuation, you went from $120,000 valuation to a $500,000 valuation. So if you sell 10% equity at 50K, and then you downsize your round to 120K, that first investor, that angel round for 10% equity at 500K is going to sue you for taking a 12K at 7% because you just ruined their valuation. Whether it turns into a lawsuit or not, you're not doing any favors to anybody setting this up. Yeah, it, it is problematic. Uh, and, and again, my, my initial response is they're actually funding more than one company here. Yeah. Uh, and, and if that's what they intended, they just need to make that 
clear. Um, so I, I like this slide if this were future rounds and they were to give you an idea of what was going to happen in the future and say first round and then next year we're going to do this and then after that. But um, otherwise, it's just incredibly confusing and it looks like a massive liability. Moving on. Oh, that's it. We're not moving on. That's just questions and answers. I got a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, so here we get some photos, I guess, of them growing some cannabis on the moon. So did they get into the hardware at all? Is that like what it's going to look like? This um, big cylindrical machine that I don't even know what it looks like. I, I'm confused by this uh, first slide in the appendix. Uh, it's, it's a visual of a, of a rotating cylinder. Uh, to to grow the plants in in this cylinder, uh, but why I'm confused? I don't know if this is their process or just the future of of agriculture is going in this direction. So I don't know if this is their product or not, Josh. I'm confused. They say they have a greenhouse cultivation system with climate battery, computer controlled, or a machine assisted. So they're finally talking about artificial intelligence, but for some reason they have like 3D printing. Like, what are you 3D printing for? What? Why do you need augmented reality? You kick those things out and talk to me about robotics and artificial intelligence and, and machine assisted stuff. Um, it's almost like they're just throwing all these keywords to kind of get people um, interested when I, I don't really think that there's, I have no idea what they're doing at this point. Um, very confusing. Yeah. So they have a technology proposal along with uh, generative design applied to ventilated pots uh, using 3D printing. Okay, so that's what the 3D printer is for is to make these pots that probably already have patents. I mean, you can't just these aerated pots, you, you can't just 3D print those without, um, you know, a patent infringement. Um, so they're going to mass manufacture ventilated pots with recycled plastics. Okay, so that's where the recycled stuff comes in at. Good to know. Um, are 3D printed pots cheaper than going down to Home Depot? Absolutely not. And it would take way too long. Um, so no, it's not cheaper than getting it from Home Depot who gets it from China. Uh, phase one development is um, is for the root system um, and the product development for medical cannabis. Oof. And, and I, I'm not even going to try to cross my eyes and read this slide. Um, I think this slide is uh, uh, showing the timeline of their process. Um, and so they start with uh, uh, a CAD design of uh, apparently a pot. Uh, then they print the pot. Then they put the flowers in the pot. And then, OK, it looks like a maybe eight day process. Yeah, I'm going to cut you off right there, Katrina, because I think I've seen enough. All right. <laughs> Uh, number one, did they identify the business plan goals? If they, uh, if the business plan goal is we need money, yes. Okay. Uh, what they're going to use that money for? No. Do they know their audience? Do they know their investor audience? I don't think so. Um, having a, having a, four or five page pitch deck just did not contain enough information. They used some buzzwords, but um, no, uh, they didn't. We really love that total addressable slide and it wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, they could have at least told us like in Colombia, what, you know, what's the advantages or, or whatever. So yeah, giving them zero points for knowing their audience because you can't offer different equity percentages uh, on the same slide for the same round. That is an absolute nightmare. Um, I haven't seen anything like that before. So thank you for that. Uh, do they understand the market? I, I'm going to give them a half a point here because yeah. they are trying to address 
the biggest problem that the cannabis industry faces, which is cost of goods sold. So I can't comment on whether their, their process is going to be successful, but at least they, they have made an attempt to address cost of goods sold. So half a point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Needs and roadblocks. I didn't see anything um, with that. I didn't see any roadblocks with the machine learning or um, anything else. I had a ton of issues with my own automation that I was using. um, And that's why I left my job and started a a company in 2013 to do just this. It still doesn't exist. um, And it's 2021. So you have a lot of roadblocks and you didn't identify any of those. Uh, nor tell us what you needed, really. Um, there wasn't, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> I would say give them a zero. Where are you at? Uh, I did not see a single roadblock uh, identified in their slide. Knowing what sets the business apart could have been really simple to say that, you know, we're going to be one of the first companies to have artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, all of these things for the the grow and you didn't put any of that in there until like an appendix somewhere deep. So I would have left, I would have started with that in what sets the business apart and then answered like why you need it. Um, so I'd have to probably give them maybe half a point because it was buried. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to be a little bit harsher here. Uh, they, did not, they did not name a single competitor, mm. not a single one. And a company you and I know, Josh, I, you knew, uh, is doing a lot of automation uh, and successfully uh, doing automation. So what puts smart root systems above I, you knew, uh, and what are you doing different that I, you knew is not doing? Uh, and, and that's just an example. There's other competitors out there trying to automate, just as you said, and they didn't talk about anybody else. And to me, that's a failure. Um, and it's something that's easy to fix. Just pick anybody and say, this is why we're different than this other company. Uh, and I also think they missed a very large opportunity Uh, to point out the difference of cost of goods sold in Colombia. We have talked repeatedly that uh, Colombia can produce for less than 20 cents a gram. And that's why people want to grow in Colombia. And if they can get that cost below 20 cents into 10 cents with their automated system, that is just phenomenal. And, And that is where I would like to see improvements in this pitch deck. Uh, improve on the the natural benefits that growing in Colombia already provides. And they didn't even mention that. They, mm-hmm. they didn't even mention that you can grow six times a year in Colombia outdoors. Uh, they didn't mention any of that. Yeah. Um, Growtronics would be another competitor to add to that. That's who I was using back in the day. Um, but I don't think they've really done anything. So that's another interesting company. Um, moving on to number six, introducing the team and products. They did introduce the team. They did introduce the product. So, well, did they introduce the product though, Josh? Um, is their product <laughs> hardware, software, three D printed pots, right. automation? Uh, what is their product? So they mentioned the product. They didn't, so they did say hardware software. They mentioned it, but they didn't really show what it was. And then when we saw it, we're like, is this going to be something on the moon? Is this a prototype? Is this augmented reality? What, what are we looking at? So yeah, maybe half a point because we're still unsure about, um, I mean, they could have literally just gone to Grotronics website, grabbed some of the images and then, you know, whatever, take something, (laughs) show us something. I don't want to see images of the moon because no one's going to be growing on the moon. It's ridiculous. Uh, creating a summer with a call to action. Um, you know, we, we did get some financials, but nothing um, that, you know, really made me pull out my checkbook. So I don't know. What do you think? Um, I did not see a call to action. Uh, I, I, I like this slide, the, this pitch deck as an initial draft and they can solve some of the problems that we have raised 
by reordering their slides and um, fleshing out some of their existing work. Uh, I would also advise them to consult with somebody in this industry so they don't make errors, like you pointed out, of having uh, different dollar amounts, different equities on the same slide, uh, which would get them into regulatory problems just on the face of it. But that's an easy, easy fix again. Uh, break them out, explain that it's different companies. So uh, I do think that this deck is um, recoverable. Uh, they have they have they have a good good start. Uh, I would encourage them to revise and uh, clarify uh, the pitch deck a little bit and maybe come back for our second review, Josh. Yeah. Uh, three and a half out of seven. It's not the worst we've seen. 50% um, is obviously not the best, but there's a lot they could do to improve that. Um, you know, back to the, the slide here with seven tips with successful investment deck. Um, they could know their audience a little bit better. Like you mentioned, Katrina, uh, about having the, the ask be a little bit better um, and not have m multiple asks um, to screw up that valuation. Um, and then, uh, shore up that, that market a little bit. Show us that you understand what's going on by eliminating the fluff. You don't need the um, autom uh, augmentation, the uh, virtual reality. You don't need the 3D printer. Get rid of that stuff. Just focus on the core, which is automating the software with hardware components. Tell us what issues you have with needs and roadblocks. Um, highlight what sets the business apart with the competition like Grotronics or Iunu. And um, actually show us the product in the very beginning and not the end. I think that's going to be huge. So when you do get to that um, call to action, that people are, are energized by your presentation. And my last comment to Smart Root Systems is to broaden your market appeal. Can this product be used for tomatoes? Uh, and if it can, your, your reach to potential investors is exponentially larger than just limiting it to cannabis. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you can, in fact, increase yields by 3%, uh, that would be very, very interesting to any agricultural product, not just cannabis, Josh. Right. 30 to 40% for avocados and blueberries. And then if you can increase 30 to 40% on cannabis, um, that's going to be huge because we're just talking about that in order to bring the cost down in Canada to match what they're doing in the US or even Colombia that is going to potentially have uh, some of the best product at the lowest price um, could all originate in Colombia. So um, interesting that this uh, deck is from there. Maybe they'll uh, improve that, get somewhere with it. Right now, it seems more like an idea. Um, so whether or not it gets off the ground, who knows? Just have to come back to the talking head and find out. I want to thank my guest, Katrina Golgowski, angel investor and attorney. Thanks for being back on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. We're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got. Hi, y'all. I'm Joe, host of Casually Baked, the podcast. If you're curious to explore the highly responsible side of cannabis, farming, and legalization, I'm here to help lighten the stigma and build your can of confidence. Download episodes now of Casually Baked, the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. And journey with me through the evolving cannabis culture and discover how and why people like you are adding cannabis to their wellness toolkit. It's time to get casually baked.